So we have this problem here. And so we want to find given R the number of rows and C the number of columns, we want to create a two dimensional array integer spiral. So what does that mean? Well, let's take a look at the sample input and output. So here we have our input as five comma six, which is just going to be R and C. And so our sample output is going to have five rows. So we have one, two, three, four, five. And then for each row, we have six columns. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, the way that the spiral works is that we're going to traverse starting on the top left corner as seen in the sample output. So we start here and we head in the rightmost direction. And the moment we get all the way to the end, we immediately start going downwards. So technically the six right here and the seven are aligned. So we go from six to seven. So we go down that way. And once we reach the bottom, now we have to go left. So we go all the way left as much as we can. And then once we get all the way to the left side, we can go up. So now we go up to 18. So once we're at 18, we've already hit one before. So now we want to move to the right immediately. So we go a little bit more right and we stop at 22. And then we go down a little bit more, stop at 24 and keep going to 27, go up to 28 and end at 30. So this is essentially the spiral that we want to make. So how do we go about doing this? Well, this problem right here is a typical simulation problem. So we want to generate our own grid where we have R rows and C columns. And so for this grid, we're going to start at our top left corner. So we'll start right here. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to have a list of four possible directions. So what does that mean? That means we have some list directions. And this is a, equal to a list containing 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, negative 1, and negative 1, 0. So what do each of these numbers mean? Well, this basically says that for each of these tuples, we have r comma c. So that just basically means what direction we want to move in. So for example, with 0 comma 1, we want to move 0 down a row and 1 to the right of a column. So if we're at 1, for example, if we're right here, then if we go in the direction 0 comma 1, that means we're going to increment our rows by zero. So we're still going to be in this row, but we're going to increment our columns by one. So we're going to end up at two and same for three, same for four, same for five and same for six. Now, the moment we get to six, we have to realize that there's no more path in front of us. We can't actually go beyond the bounds. So we're going to have to turn. So that's where we go to the next possible direction. So we've covered this direction. Now we have to go in this direction and this direction is actually going downwards. So we're increasing our row number, but we're not changing our column number. So in this case, what we would do is we would go down. So increase the row number and don't do anything to the column number. And we keep going down and we keep going down and we get all the way to 10. And once we're here, we can no longer go down. So we move to the next possible direction. And so we keep doing this. And every time we get to a boundary or to a number that we've already encountered, we're going to change our direction. So let's plot out a few more paths. So we're going to go in this direction. And at some point, we're going to reach this bound right here. So once we reach that bound, we're going to transfer to this last direction here. So that's going to go up one row and it's not going to change the column. So we're going to keep going up. And now here's a unique situation. So the moment we reach some number that we've already populated, we don't actually want to keep populating that. So we don't want to keep going in this pattern of doing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 6, and 7, 18, and then going back to 1. We want to instead stop at 18 and turn right immediately to 19. So the way we're going to do that is that's just another check in our condition. So just like we're checking to see if we've reached a boundary, we're also going to check to see if the next possible location that we would visit is actually already populated. And if it is, then we don't actually visit that location. We just immediately change the direction. Now, in this case, we also have the situation where we have to change our direction such that we are going right once more. So the way we can do that is we're going to have some direction index, obviously, and that'll keep track of the current direction that we're using. 
So one's direction index is at three. So this is zero, this is one, and this is two. And once we're at three, we can increment by one and then take the modulo of four. So we go all the way from three back to zero. And so that takes care of any mathematical issues there. We have zero, one, two, three, zero, one, two, three, so on and so forth. Now, what is our stopping condition? Well, this is actually pretty simple as well. We know that with five rows and six columns in this instance, we're going to have 30 possible numbers because we're starting at one and we're going all the way to 30. And there are 30 possible cells. That's just five times six. And so we can generalize that. The number of cells in a grid in a spiral like this is just going to be r times c. So all we need to do is take a loop, iterate from one to r times c plus one exclusive. And so that's it for the analysis of this algorithm. Let's go ahead and implement this. We can begin by defining our function. So let's call it spiral. So we'll say def spiral, and we'll give two parameters. Those are going to be r and c. So that's the number of rows we have and the number of columns we have. Now inside this function, we first need to create our grid. Let's call it grid. And so we're gonna set it equal to just none times C for blank in range R. That's just a blank grid with R rows and C columns. Now, after we have that, we need to create our directions list. So we're gonna call that directions is equal to, we have a list and inside this list, we have our possible directions. So we can either go right, which is gonna be zero comma one, we can go down, which is one comma zero. We can go left, which is zero comma negative one. And we can go up, negative one comma zero. And it's important that you keep this in this order because this is going to be how your spiral is made. If you want your spiral to be formatted in some other way, like maybe you want to go down first rather than going right first, then you're gonna to have to change the order of this direction so that you account for that difference. Now, after we have this, we can create our direction index. So that's going to be the index that keeps track of what direction we're currently going in. So we'll say dir index is equal to zero. And so that's just starting at the first possible direction, which is just going right. Now, after this, we need to create two more variables, r comma c. So those two variables are going to represent the current location in our grid that we are applying numbers to. So this is going to be equal to just zero comma zero. Now, after we have this, we need to begin our loop. So we can say for i in range one, r times c plus one. So we're saying r times c plus one because that's the number of rows times number of columns is the number of items that are there. And then we want to just end one above that because we're starting at one. We're not starting at zero here. So once we have this loop header, we can just say grid bracket r bracket c is equal to i. So that's just the element. Now that's the easy part. Now, what we have to do next is to figure out what direction to move in, if we're going to change directions or if we're just going to continue in the same direction. So to decide that, let's just create our new location, nr and c. So those two coordinates are going to represent the place that we're going to end up. So we're gonna say this is equal to r plus directions, dir index, and then whatever that r coordinate is. And the same thing for the NC. So this is C plus directions, dir index one, because that's going to be the C coordinate. Now, once we have this, we actually need to make sure that this is a possible location to go to. So there are two things to check. One is to make sure that we're in the bounds of the grid. And the other is to make sure that the location that we're at isn't already populated. So we can put that all under one if statement. So if NR is less than zero or NR is greater than or equal to R, or nc is less than zero, or nc is greater than or equal to c. So those conditions right there account for being in the bounds. And once we have that, we also need to check if the grid is also, if it's not any of the previous ones, if the grid at nr bracket nc is not none. Because if it's not none, then it's already populated. So we need to change our direction. So here we can say dir index is equal to dir index plus one, and then we have to take modulo four just to make sure that we remain in the bounds of the directions list. And once we have this, we can repeat the same line that we had on eight. So we'll just take this and we'll copy it over here. Now, if this condition fails, then there's nothing that we really need to do extra because that means that we can continue in the same direction. So now we can just say R C is equal to N R N C. So N R and N C are the updated locations that we can go to next. Now that, 
ends it for this loop. We don't have to add anything more. So all we need to do now is just return grid and that creates our integer spiral. So let's go ahead and test this code. So let's just say a variable s is equal to spiral and let's say 5 comma 6. This was the input that we tested with when we were explaining the algorithm. Now we have s is equal to this and we can just print all the items of s. So for every row in s, we're just going to print the contents of the row. So that's it for the code. Let's test this out. So we test this and we see that we get the outcome that we were expecting. We start on the top left corner and we proceed right. And the moment we hit the bound, we go down. So six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then we go left all the way to 15. And then we go up all the way to 18. And here we've recognized that there's a one above us, even though we're not out of bounds. So we have to still change our direction. And so we go to 19, 20, 21, 22, and we end up all the way at 30. And we can even test this out with a bigger number. Let's say we wanted to do this for 14 comma 17. So we have 14 rows and 17 columns. Well, this still is going to work. So here our input doesn't actually fit on the screen, but if we just resize this, we can see that we are still applying our spiral. So we're going all the way from left to right, and then we're going down all the way, and then we're going left, and then we're going up, and we keep repeating that pattern until we get to the end. So that's it for this video, and I hope this was helpful.